another season of Big Red Football is underway. And the Nebraska Cornesters will fill your Saturday afternoons with thrills and excitement. If you can't be in the stadium, you can be a part of the action by listening to the Big Four in the Big Eight. Tom Osbert, Jack Payne, Kent Pavelka, and Lyle Brimser. It's all on KFAB Radio. Set your dial on 11 and get turned on. Follow the Big Red with the Big Four on Radio KFAB. Why did Car and Driver magazine call the Audi 5000 a functional masterpiece and yet one of the most sumptuous cars ever to come out of Germany? Why did Road and Track magazine say, for the money, we don't see anything that can touch it? Test drive the Audi 5000 at your Porsche Audi dealer and find out why. Novak, Porsche Audi, 2111 Douglas Street. Anyone can install a water heater if you know your local codes. If you're a professional licensed plumbing contractor, it's easy. Some home improvements are best done by you. Installing a water heater isn't one of them. Let your professional plumber do it for you with a state water heater, the best under the sun. In Omaha, this is KMTV. Chuck Roberts, John McDonald, Dick Fletcher, and Dale Hansen report now from News Center 3. Good evening, I'm Chuck Roberts. And I'm John McDonald, and thank you for joining us tonight. Omaha school children are doing their first homework lessons of the new school year this evening. Today was the first day of school in Omaha. But with a new year comes the changes brought on by the taxpayer-imposed lid on school spending. News Center 3's John Clark reports now on how the lid is affecting one student. There are 480 new sophomores here at North High this year. Brian Perigo is one of them. Brian played football as a ninth grader at McMillan last year. His coaches there say he's little but tough, and with some experience, he might make a football player. But his chances for experience received a blow when the school board dropped sophomore football while trimming its budget. And Brian's reaction was natural. Uh, it's a little bit uh, maybe mad, probably just dis discouraged kind of. But it kind of makes you want to try harder to make the junior varsity a varsity. Brian isn't one to give up without a fight, so he did try out for junior varsity football, competing with upperclassmen for a spot on the North team. And for now, at least, he and a few other sophomores have made that team. We're going to try to keep as many of these kids as we can. Um, you know, we're forced to look at them in a little bit different light. We can't bring them along as, you know, like we would like to as slowly. But, uh, of course, we haven't cut very many sophomores to this point that we feel have got a, much of a chance at all. So um, we're going to take a look at them as long as we can. I felt I might not start, but since I figured I'd probably get a chance to play if the coaches could do it, I thought that'd be pretty good. Well, I'm hoping I can help out the team quite a bit. It looks like you'll probably have a good team and having some good practices. And the coaches seem like they know quite a bit about it, so we should do pretty good. While Brian and the other sophomores have made it against the upperclassmen so far, more cuts will probably have to be made. And what concerns the coaches is that they might be cutting players who, with another year's experience and maturity, might have otherwise become football stars. From North High, John Clark, News Center 3. But at the Millard School District, they're talking more, not less, John. M-O-N-E-Y. Millard <laughs> School District voters customarily say yes to school board issues, school bond issues, that is. But in the climate of lid proposals and program cuts, the October 23rd election is by no means in the bag. Enrollment is up 8% this year in Millard, while Omaha and other school districts report fewer students. School officials say at least half the schools are seriously overcrowded, and the $29 million bond issue will allow the construction of three new elementary schools, two junior high schools, and two senior high schools. The senior high construction involves one new building on each of the existing high school campuses. Juniors and seniors at each campus will go to classes in one building and freshmen and sophomores in the other. Superintendent Don Stroh says he's reasonably confident voters will see the need for the construction. Stroh estimates the bond issue will trigger a three mil levy increase for 1984-85, 
which works out to about $58 a year for a $50,000 home. Hurricane David is pounding Savannah, Georgia tonight. Winds are 90 miles an hour. The rains are torrential. We have more in this report from Phil Bremen. David tonight continues to bear down on the nation's southeastern seaboard. Only the fringe of the storm whipped into Jacksonville, Florida, but it was enough to churn up coastal waters and send people to crowded evacuation centers. By midday, the storm had moved into Georgia, heading for the historic port of Savannah. Thousands of people have been evacuated from the city itself and thousands more from the barrier islands just offshore. Many of them are popular tourist resorts. After bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic had made it off the islands, bridges to them were closed. More than five inches of rain had fallen by mid-afternoon, hours before the hurricane was due. High winds at the edge of the storm's 90-mile-an-hour center caused widespread power outages. Tides of six feet above normal were expected. Up the coast from Savannah, Charleston, South Carolina, was already feeling the effects of David. The governor ordered power cut off on Hilton Head Island, further discouraging people from sticking out the storm. The National Weather Service predicted extensive flooding of low-lying areas. Virtually the entire city of Charleston shut down this morning to prepare for the worst, but already rising water was immobilizing some traffic. Rain fell constantly. If David delivers the 13 to 14 foot waters that are predicted, some islands could be covered completely. Phil Bremen, NBC News in South Carolina. By far, David did its worst damage in the Dominican Republic. The unofficial death count has passed 1,000 persons. Hundreds sought refuge in this church in San Cristobal, but 20 died. It'll be three weeks before electricity is restored, the water is largely contaminated, and agricultural crops destroyed. U.S. disaster relief teams have arrived to coordinate rebuilding, but many of the supplies are still sitting on the ground in Puerto Rico because of Hurricane Frederick. Communications are so disrupted, the national leaders cannot assemble a legislative quorum to declare an emergency. This family lost everything they own, but they don't seem dispirited. They asked the NBC cameraman, why do you just take pictures? Why don't you help? Omaha police have chased a teenage robbery suspect at high speeds down Ames Avenue, but it all came to an abrupt end when the boy's speeding car crashed into another vehicle. The boy, who is 16, could not avoid the other vehicle at the intersection of 65th and Ames. Police gave chase after a robbery at the Haney Shoe Store at 5419 North 90th Street. According to officers, the youth was also wanted in connection with last Friday's assaults and shootings at the Crossroads Center parking lot. In that incident, two men were shot, two women were beaten, and a car was stolen. You only get married once in a while, so do it right. Have your reception at the Ranch Bowl. The Ranch Bowl, more than a bowling alley. They're here, Hot Point's factory rebates for their 75th Diamond Jubilee. Now get the Nebraska Furniture Mart's low sale price, plus Hot Point's factory rebate. Up to $50 cash savings with selected Hot Point quality appliances. Choose a Hot Point self-cleaning range, refrigerator freezer, heavy-duty washer and dryer, double oven range. Get the Nebraska Furniture Mart's low sale price, and for a limited time, get Hot Point's factory rebate. Up to $50 cash savings at Nebraska Furniture Mart now. Bet you want what I got. Health appeal with a lot of help from Ultra Bright. It's a grin that shines its brightest. It's a freshness you can feel. It's a natural attraction. It's your health appeal. What makes Ultra Bright the health appeal toothpaste? A smile that shines its natural widest. Sparkling clean breath and cavity fighting fluoride. It's a natural attraction. It's your Ultra Bright. The health appeal toothpaste. We are periodically advised to buy real estate as an inflation hedge, and yet the same economic climate makes loan money either unavailable or unreasonable. Kerry Schultz reports on what it's like getting a home loan in Omaha. Raja Lakani has lived here in Omaha for five years, but because his job takes him around the world for extended periods of time, he's never owned a home here in Omaha. Now he's getting around to doing that. He's just recently bought a house and is now getting to the financial end of the deal. How will he pay for the house, and how much money can he borrow? Lending institutions, for the most part, have money available for long-term mortgage loans if you buy right now. But a potential home buyer moving to Omaha, say, six months from now, might find it more difficult to borrow the money he needs for a home like this one. Actually, the, the, the funds that are available for uh, lending in the real estate market are 
depend on, to a large extent on the monies that are we take in on savings deposits. And recently there's been uh, some indications that savings flows are beginning to dwindle. And I think if that's the case and it continues over the next three or four months, then you'll see funds becoming scarce. The decrease in savings deposits isn't the only indicator that money is going to get tighter. More people are investing in the stock market, and more savers are earning with bonds than with regular passbook accounts. Grebe says there's little doubt that home loans will get more and more expensive. But then money is a commodity, and like groceries and gasoline, its cost fluctuates with supply and demand. Kerry Schultz, New Center 3. Money is indeed hard to come by, especially federal money, but millions of federal dollars for housing is now coming into the city of Omaha all because of a shovel full of soil today. And that's because the soil was from the first site selected for the scattered site housing complexes. Major city officials manned shovels at 69th and Spring Streets today for the groundbreaking. By doing so, the city will get over five and a half million dollars from the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Well, I'm glad we finally met all the criteria. It's been real rough. Frankly, I didn't know whether we were ever going to make it or not. Nate Rubin tells me we met all of the uh, criteria that he's laid down for this particular, for the for these projects, and. Uh, that now the money is going to be released and we'll be able to proceed. The groundbreaking climax months of bitter battles between the Omaha Housing Authority, which wanted scattered site housing, and the resident homeowners who did not. 24 units will be built here at 69th and Spring. The Omaha City Council wants to renegotiate the 1980 portion, or the second year, of a two-year contract it signed with the police, fire, and civilian employees unions. Councilman Jerry Hassett says the cost of living clause the city agreed